Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now this week's video is all about uh, a trip they had uh, to the North Yorkshire Moors. We do it every year. Uh, and we also visited the North Yorkshire coastline and did some nice walking on the coastal path of the Cleveland Way. Now each year, year we go every year, I like to go with a camera and document uh, the visit that we had. Uh, I don't like to carry too much equipment when we're walking etc. So I go as light as possible. So this year, and I take uh, different cameras each year, I went with a 35mm camera and a medium format camera. And these were the cameras that I took. And they're all in this little bag. So you can see there's not a lot of weight in that. Easy to carry. Uh, the 35mm camera was the, uh, you know it's going to be a small camera, uh, a Minox 35, a very small, if not the smallest, 35mm camera. I can't show you the pictures from that because I haven't developed it yet. And the other cameras in here, it's a medium format camera. It takes a 6 by 45 centimeter negatives. And before I show you the camera, just a little bit of history about the manufacturer. Now, the company was formed in round about 1873 by a chap, and I'm going to try and pronounce this, called Casa Saburo Sigari. I think I've got that right, but it's probably got it totally wrong. But anyway, that was the, the chap's name, and uh, they sold to photographic materials, etc., uh, to other, other uh, photographic companies. And then in the early uh, 19th century, they fetched out their first cameras, and then a bit later on, they fetched, started to fetch out films. And uh, the company changed its name uh, to Kanika, as it's uh, known these days. Now, they made... Uh, as I say, the first cameras in early in the 19th century, um, they made uh, cameras for the masses, but they also made quality cameras. We've all heard of the uh, Kanika Minolta uh, Hexar camera, 35mm camera. A very popular but very expensive film camera these days. But I really want to talk about the actual Kanika company. Um, now, I bought this camera uh, last year. I've done a, a review if you want to check it out. It's called the Lily Folding Camera and it's an absolutely wonderful camera and I was blown away by the results from this lens. I don't know if you can see that but it's a, a Hexar lens and the Hexar lenses are supposed to be very very good and in my experience they're absolutely wonderful lenses. And the camera that I use on this trip in this bag which I'm going to show you in a minute uh, also has a Hexar lens and I was really again blown away with the images that this little folding camera produced. So let's have a look at the camera now, a brief look. Then I'll show you uh, uh, some of the pictures that I took. I, co I took quite a few. And then we'll uh, have a closer look at the camera, show you how it works, etc. Then finish off with the rest of the images. So let's have a, a quick look at the camera inside this bag. Right, this is the camera in question, the one that you didn't see in the bag. But it's the camera that took all the pictures in this uh, vid that you're going to see in this video. It's the Kanika Pearl 3. It's a, a medium format camera that shoots uh, 6 by 45 centimeter negatives. So you should get 16 images on a roll of 120 roll film. They introduced the Pearl range in about 1949 with the Pearl 1. Followed by the Pearl 2 and this one the Pearl 3. In 1958 they fetched out the Pearl 4 but apparently it looked like these but the construction was completely different. The Pearl series of cameras are superbly built as all Kanika cameras that I've, I've ever owned. They're all beautifully built. They're built to a high precision. It's a compact camera. It has a nice weight to it and every just everything works as it should do. As you can see it's a folding camera and uh, Opening bellows reveals the shutter and the lens. And the, the thing that really makes this camera free is the fact that it's got a Hexar lens. Now, Hexar lenses, in my opinion, are among the best lenses that you can buy. Uh, in, my, in, in what I've used over the years, I just love the look that the Hexar lenses give. So it's a beautiful, well-engineered, uh, compact, medium format camera, which will take a closer look 
uh, in a minute or so um, and I'll show you how the various functions and knobs and dials work but first of all let's take a look at some uh, images that I took with this beautiful little Konica Pearl 3 camera. Right, I hope you enjoyed those first set of pictures. There's uh, more to follow. Uh, but before we take a closer look at the camera, just a, a brief word about the, the film films and the developer that I use. I know people like to know that. And then just a, a brief look at the 645 format. Now, uh, I tried to show some of the weather conditions in the opening sequence. We had heavy rain. Uh, we had uh, high winds, uh, fog. A bright sun, hazy conditions etc, you name it we got it. But knowing that the weather was going to be pretty grim the first couple of days we got there I loaded the camera with Ilford HP5 just give me that bit extra speed and rated it at 400 ISO and then the second part of the holiday the weather improved and uh, I loaded it with Ilford FP4 and rated that at 125 ISO. Now I developed uh, both films in this it's Adox X-T3, it's a powdered developer, uh, it's a clone of X-Doll, called X-Doll, and it's a really, really good developer, this. Now, I uh, diluted the developer, stock solution, a one-to-one -one with water, I developed the HP5 for 12 minutes at 20 degrees centigrade, and then the Ilford FP4 at 10 minutes at 20 degrees centigrade, and I got some really nice uh, negatives full of detail. Now that's the, the film that I use as a developer. Now brief talk about the actual format. Now this is a 645 uh, negative and this is 35mm. Now you will hear people from time to time saying that uh, it's a waste of time shooting 645. You might as well shoot 35mm. But uh, as you can see here, that's just not true. The, uh, the 645 negative is nearly uh, three times bigger than 35mm. And it's always followed in film photography that the bigger the negative, the, the better quality that you'll get. So if you shot both uh, negatives on, say, Ilford FP4 with uh, using the same focal length lens, you're going to get a lot bigger quality, uh, detailed uh, enlargement out of the 645 negative than you're going to get from the 35mm. So don't let people kid you, bigger is always better. Right, let's take a, a closer look at the Pearl 3 and I'll show you how its uh, knobs and buttons etc work. The camera weighs in about uh, 620 grams. Uh, its dimensions are roughly edge to edge. It's four and a half inches. Uh, top of the camera to the bottom of the wind on knob. It's four and a quarter inches. And the width of the camera when it's closed is round about an inch and a inch and three quarters. 
So it's a very compact medium format camera, as you saw uh, how it fitted in that little bag I had when I was on holiday. Uh, uh, but it's a, a weighty camera and that's a testament to its uh, build quality. Keep in mind that this camera's probably over 60, 61 years old and it's still working fine. Now if we look at the back of the camera we can see we've got the viewfinder, the rangefinder range finder window and um, with no red window for seeing which numbered frame we're on. And that's because they incorporated in this camera an automatic winding system as I called it. Now if you look there we've got uh, it's like a red V sign and that means when it's at that when you keep turning it just keeps turning it doesn't stop so that's that's because when you put the film in at this side and then you connect it to the wind on uh, spool at this side you have to wind the film on until the the index arrows on the uh, on the backing paper are lined up with the index marks on the camera so once you've wound, put the film in and you've wound it so the areas are lining up with the index marks, then you press that lever backwards. Now the camera is calibrated to wind on to the first frame. And it has done. Now it's at number one. Now to take another picture you press that backwards and wind on to number two and so on. So it works very, very well. Uh, the only thing is you uh, you have to remember uh, when you've taken a shot always to wind on because you will you will forget you can uh, double expose with this camera and then when you get to the end of the uh, the 16th image the camera will wind on to V and it will keep winding on and it allows you to wind up all the backing paper onto the film so you can take it out so a clever little system the only problem uh, with it is that uh, Modern day films are uh, thinner than the older films of this camera was made so you can get uh, um, overlapping frames or the negatives, the spaces between them are very very close. A uh, work around to that is just to uh, wrap some backing paper a few inches around your uh, take up spool and then put your film in and that does help. Now at the top of the camera we've got uh, an indication dial you have to turn this manually what type of film you've got in what speed etc uh, it's no use nowadays really but uh, it does look nice on the camera and then we've got this lovely engraving of Pearl 3 uh, that's a button that's not for firing the shutter I'll show you in a minute that's for opening the front up the cold shoe at this side and then when we look at this side there's a hinge you'll notice there's no eyelets so you can't fit a strap on without having a uh, a case to carry the camera about and th this side we have the latch for getting into the back of the camera and you simply pull that latch up and then grab the, the back and then open it like that then we've got the film gate and as you can see uh, that when you're looking through the viewfinder and holding the camera like that you're going to get a vertical uh, perspective to get a landscape perspective you have to turn the camera sidewards just the way they're made but you soon get used to that. Now when you're loading the film into the camera you pop it in this side and then you pull it up onto uh, uh, get it into the holes on the uh, this side of the take take up spool there and then start to wind it make sure it's secure and then keep winding until the index arrows on the backing paper align with them two uh, white dots close the back and then wind on to the first frame that I've just shown you. So all in all it's a, quite a very simple camera. Now the, the viewfinder in this, I've heard people say it's really small and uh, hard to look through. I didn't find that. I found it quite bright and uh, the rangefinder spot uh, was easy to see. So it was a, a great camera uh, to use. That's your uh, viewfinder, viewfinder and this is your rangefinder window there. We have a little leg that we can pull out to stand the camera up and this here is a shutter button. I'll show you that in a second. So if we open the camera you press that button there and the front opens. It reveals the, the lens, the shutter, and the bellows etc. You can see how beautiful it's built, all these beautiful struts on it etc. Now the bellows can be a weak point on these cameras but this one is absolutely fine. Maybe at some point they've been changed, I don't know, but they're absolutely light tight. It's a Shikosha MXL shutter uh, and the lens as I say 
is a 75mm hexile lens f3.5 and the apertures go down to f20 sorry f32 and you move the the aperture ring which is there by moving this lever if I can find it there it's always a bit awkward in video so you move it there and it goes from f well 3.4 I think it says there right down to f32 uh, this is handy, this is, you don't get this on, on a lot of folding cameras. We've got a depth of field scale, so we can actually set the uh, the focus on this camera using the scale, or we can use the scale focus by using the infinity sign, or using these uh, uh, these measurements that are in feet. So let's say, if I get closer in, I wanted to uh, shoot at f8, which is round about there, set the infinity sign to that mark, and then look across to the other side, F8, our shooting distance will be roughly around about 12 feet to infinity. And I used uh, this this way of focusing quite a lot, a lot on, the, on the holidays. And it worked very, very well. Now this, this front bit is a shutter speed. And these run from uh, B, one second to five hundredth of a second. And if you see me turn it, you'll see that the, the, the aperture is linked to it. And that's because on the front of the camera, you can see it's got uh, where they are. There they are. EV numbers on the on the front of the camera there at the bottom so you, you set your camera up uh, you set the EV number and then when you shoot in a given uh, shutter speed and you move the the dial it'll automatically move the aperture but with this one they are not locked together so you can set them independently which is great the lens looks like it's uh, got a coating on it which is another good thing you cock the shutter by uh, pulling it up that way and then you fire it with this button at the side that button there fires it now a lot of people think with this camera that you can't um, fix um, a cable release to it well you can because it's an, an unusual, unusual but a great position it's at the bottom bottom of the standard there I screw that in, cock the shutter, you'll see now if I fire the, it fires the shutter, so that's where the, the cable release goes, it goes there, surprising how many people uh, miss that. So all in all it's a very very beautiful little folding camera, it's an easy camera to use, um, you get to your first frame and then uh, to take the picture you uh, Set your exposure and um, set your aperture and, and your shutter speed to get the correct exposure. And then to focus, you use that knob there. As you can see, the lens the shutter goes in and out. And that that's linked to the viewfinder window there. And when you turn that, when the two images coincide together, then you're in focus and then you fire the shutter. Uh, so it's that easy to use, really. A great little camera. I think it's a, a beautiful little camera. Uh, you close it by pressing those two latches at either side, but you must make sure that uh, it's focused to infinity. Push those in and it shuts nice and easy and goes back to its compact size. So a great little camera that uh, I'll probably use a lot more and uh, you'll, as you've seen it takes some nice pictures. So let, let me show you now the, the last set of images I took and this time on Ilford FP4.
Right guys, I hope you enjoyed the pictures as much as I did uh, taking them. I think the weather, weather conditions did help in me creating some moody looking images. Uh, I think if it had been a very bright sunshine with no clouds and a dry atmosphere, the images would have been quite predictable. But the weather conditions do make uh, a difference, in, uh, in, especially in black and white uh, photography. And I'd love to hear your comments about that. Uh, I didn't uh, use a light meter for any of the pictures. I just guesstimated the exposure based on my own knowledge. Uh, I used the uh, Sony 16 rule, but uh, in a different way. And I'm going to show you how I did that in another video. So, uh, that, but that's for another video. Uh, the Little Pearl uh, 3 performed flawlessly. It's a beautifully uh, well-engineered well camera. Uh, it's small when we compare that with the Mamiya 6 holding camera you can see that this one's a lot smaller and it's quite a bit lighter um, some people say the viewfinder on this camera is small and dim but I didn't find that whatsoever the patch is clear so I, it was easy to focus and it's quite bright it doesn't have frame lines so you won't get uh, exact um, composition but it's near enough and if you compare it with a, uh, a camera like this one now this is a uh, Voigtlander Besser 2 the actual viewfinder on this is so small and dim compared to the uh, the the pearl. Uh, you know, there are similar to these cameras, but this is a lot brighter viewfinder. And I think at the time of manufacture, it would have been considered so. Now, obviously, it's important when you buy these vintage cameras that they they're working correctly. If they don't, uh, you'll end up using them. You'll have light leaks, or they won't focus or the, the exposure will be wrong, and you end up saying, oh, it's all rubbish, and you put them in a, in, a, in a cupboard and forget about them. It's important to get them from a trusted seller, and, and sometimes you can get one that's been uh, cleaned, lubricated, and adjusted, as they call CLA. Uh, you will get a camera that uh, performs as it should do. Now, this camera was sold as being serviced, CLA, and uh, it, that, uh, that showed in the images, because everything was correct. The shutter speeds work fine, the apertures do, um, the camera folds and shuts as it should do, uh, it, everything works uh, properly, uh, so I've, I've no disappointments on that score. As I say, the, the, the build quality is really, really good, I can't stress that enough, it's a beautifully built camera, and it's uh, the way it's made, you know, the struts are beautiful shapes on etc, they're just beautiful to look at and hold. Now the, the tab on the, on the actual round the shutter there, is where you focus and it makes it so easy so if I'm uh, there's a shutter button now because it's a 645 when you look through the viewfinder for the first time you'll see it's in portrait format but use it this way just moving the lever like that until you focus you've set your, your shutter and your aperture and press it but it's that easy for a uh, uh, landscape format you've got to turn your hand from that way to that way and again use the focus knob Turn like that until you in focus and press the button. And it's that simple. Really, really nice. Uh, it's also got a really handy depth of field scale there. And I use that quite a lot on the landscape shots. Uh, you can use it on infinity focus or scale focus. And it does work, I've tried it. So that you don't often get that on the folding camera, so it's very, very handy to have that. The lens on this, the Hexar lens, produces beautiful images as the XRs always do. They have a certain quality too to them that it's hard to define and I, uh, I absolutely love the Hexar lenses. One thing with these cameras I've been told you have to check that the bellows are light tight that's a weak point with them. Uh, a couple of things or three things you need to remember this camera that uh, one it's no eyelets so you need a case uh, to carry it about or a bag like I did. Um, you can double expose with this camera, so every time you're taking a, an image, wind on to the next frame. And always remember to, if you use the tap focusing tab, is always push it to infinity. Uh, because if you don't and try and force it shut, you'll bend these struts at the side. So push that in, and then it falls in just beautifully like that. And you've got this little beautiful package that shoots uh, quite big negatives, 645, and you get a really good quality. So all in all, a brilliant little camera that I really enjoyed using and uh, I'd recommend this camera to, to anybody and I think they'll absolutely love it. Right, that is the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like, a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel 
and hit that notification bell. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. As I always say, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video. The Pearl 3. Thank you.